We're live? We're live! Oh, shoot. Did you almost fall? No, I got stuck. I came in the chair the wrong way. <laughs> Good morning. I'm entertained. Because I was doing a little dance? This is entertaining. We do a little dance. We're live. We're live. That's what I'm saying this morning. I'm entertained. Well, good. Good morning. Welcome to the Brian and Carrie Live pre-show. Today's topic, by the way, is all about self-love. How it is the most important factor to success in anything and why. Everybody talks about it. All the experts, all the books, all the self-help gurus. But no one has ever told you how to achieve self-love until today. I am a huge, game changer. I'm a huge fan of this topic. Game changer. Because um, as a recovering, no, as a recovered people pleaser, I, I would, like that. I would like to say that um, that was one of my greatest challenges in the past. So for me, I'm super excited about that. Yes. Good morning, Brian Sackowitz, Lisa Arsenault, Lynette Macias, and Aaron Johnson. Woo. What was that? Woo. I'm. That's my excited I noise. Know, I don't even know what that was. Woohoo! I'm gonna like some people's comments here. Good morning, y'all. Tiffany, happy hump day! Tiffany, no shit. I was about to get up and like shake my bum at you. Do it. This is definitely worth the price of admission. Yeah. <laughs> Cecily says we are bad in black. Oh, you're yes, bad in black. Are. Oh, I'm wearing navy blue. Yeah, but, but it looks like black. It looks like I black. Agree. I'm ready. Good, um, I'm giddy, Brian's giddy. getting giddy waiting for his program to arrive. Yeah, man. Get giddy with Michelle it. Adams. I really love her. I love Michelle Adams. Can I, I can her. I say something? This is not Michelle to put you on the spot, but I was I was saddened. I was. I was saddened to find out that you're not coming to the October retreat. Because <laughs> so we talked in Spain about you wanted to come to the next one. I was like, yes! He made like and a then puppy I, dog I, th face. I think I asked Carrie yesterday, the day before, and I was like, oh yeah, Michelle Adams is coming. And she goes, no, Michelle's going to sit this one out. I'm like, oh. He did. He made a total puppy dog face. I haven't, I mean, this isn't to take away from your comment about Michelle, but I haven't told you yet that Liz Gillinger is coming. Woohoo! So, there you go. I'm just saying. I'm having a hard time in my chair today. I love our peeps. That's how come I get so excited. Yeah, Michelle's sad too. Good morning, Goldowski. It was Kelly's birthday yesterday. Did everybody know that? And Chris says he's, he was just in time for some backside bouncing. <laughs> she was shaking her up. Yes, Whatever. today's topic, self-love. How it is the most important factor in success of anything. I don't care if your goal is fitness. I don't care if your goal is relationships. I don't care if your goal is happiness. I don't care if your goal is money or business or entrepreneurial success. Self-love is the definable most important factor of any of that working. And... Ever notice how every guru talks about self-love? you got to love yourself, they say. Mm -hmm. got to love yourself, but they don't ever give us usable, practical ways of actually achieving that, you know, until today. Right. So, that's today. I just have to comment on Maureen's comment, because Maureen just said, so happy I got to start the program yesterday, because like... No shit. As soon as we finished our show yesterday, yeah. I got a message that said Maureen Blonde has, you know, purchased the oh. blah, 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 Achieve the Goals You Set. I, like, I mean, like, she was all over that. So oh. I can totally envision right now Maureen and Daniel sitting down last night yeah. over a cup of coffee or wine or whatever, yes. starting the program. And I absolutely adore little that. Little Vino, good morning to Karen Roberts. Papa Draps. We look cute this morning. Louise Fournier, thank you. Maureen, good morning. Connie, good morning. Kelly, happy day after birthday, lovely. Uh, Brian Sackwitz, I've already said good morning to you. I'm going to do it again. Good morning again. Good morning, Sackwitz. Can I say one more thing? No. Please. Yes. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bobby Barrett. <gasps> happy birthday to you. Bobby's birthday yes, today? Yes. Bobby Barrett is birthday girl today. Oh, my gosh. I love Bobby yes. Barrett. And if I, could, if I could turn the camera around, I could show you that my birthday gift from Bobby Barrett is sitting right up there in right the corner there. on our shelf, and I see it every day. Indeed. I love it. Indeed. Yes, <sighs> Sackowitz is right. Nobody gives you all the steps you need about this whole self-love yeah. conundrum. It's not really a conundrum. It's easier than you think. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal something. It is stuff you've heard us say before. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Also, in a good what, way. what you can't... Oh, you can. You can see it. There's a computer right here. I have an email ready. An email composed by me, BG. 
that I sent to somebody about seven years ago. And I'm going to read it to you when we get started. And I'm going to talk about that as relates to self-love. I'm looking for I'm looking forward to that. Yo, I'll tell you why after. Um, you know, I just want to say yes. something. First of all, I want to give a massive shout out to Brian Sakowitz because you yes. continue, my friend, to just blow me away every day with some right? updates that you're sharing with. Oh, Bobby's there! Bobby Barrett, happy birthday! Happy beautiful. birthday, Bobby! She's here. Hello, puppet. Oh, I love you. <laughs> um, but I just want to talk about the the how aspect for a second because I, I think it really is like um isn't it the most common experience that we've all had when it comes to the self-help world, right? Yeah. You read a book and you're like, yes, I want to claim my self-love. I want to feel that. I want to go after that. And you're reading the book and you're like, you're yes, 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 yes. But then you close the book and a week goes by and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't know what to do now because... I have no idea how to capture that emotion right. that I was feeling while I was reading it. And yes. that's what we have worked so hard to do, which is to create that bridge be between the where you're at, the stuck moment, and the that, that feeling that you're yeah. looking to capture for yourself in Absolutely. whatever aspect of life it is. And we're going to call a little bullshit today. Not on people. We don't really talk shitty about people. It's not who we are. It's just no, not our game. It's tactful. But it is tactless, but we are going to call some bullshit on concepts. We're going to talk about concepts that you have heard a thousand times and why they are complete and utter bullshit, and therefore you should stop paying attention to them. And in doing so, we're doing that, by the way, not to, you know, think ourselves awesome, but to empower you. The whole self-help or self-love conceptual stuff that floats every day in our world, 99% of it is complete nonsense. But it often leaves us feeling as though we're broken, we're not wired properly, this is never going to happen for us. And so today we're going to shit on some concepts in the vein of empowering you. That's the whole point. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm going to just, uh, the, my, the language that came to me was like shine a light on them. Yes. Like shine a real light on them and so that you guys can understand maybe why they haven't been working for you. Right. Because I think that that's another thing that's so frustrating for people, right? Like... You know, why do I have to, uh, you know, why isn't this working for me, but it works for them? And, and I, I keep trying and I try and I try and I never yes. get there, you know, which makes me think about something else that I haven't told you about yet. So, and I'm not obviously going to name names on, on anybody, but you know, I, I name recently, names. no names, no, <laughs> I recently started working with a, with a private client and, yeah. um, the private work that I do is incredibly intimate. Like yes. it's very, very intimate. Like I get all up in your world. I am your buddy. I am, we're locked arms for, for three months. Right. And this person said to me yesterday that they were having a hard time dealing with the, the fact that they had to get a coach. Yeah. You know, now obviously we all know because we talk about learning language all the time. That's a language check thing. But yeah. like, think about that for a second. Our society is so like skewed in the world of self-help and mental emotional development yeah. that people are feeling guilty and bad and ashamed for ascending and evolving, right? Absolutely. And, and that's really what it comes down Absolutely. to. Absolutely. We have two minutes left in the pre-show. Yeah, sure. Contents later. Just want to say good morning to Mama Draps. Good morning, Michelle Lee. Uh, Kelly Goldowski has reminded us that apparently today is Mama Draps and Papa Draps twins' birthday. I saw that on Facebook. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, twins, twin Draps. I can't remember their names. And Lee, well, because, because the Draps looks have 14 kids, kids, right? You have 14 kids, 16 kids, something like that? They have five. Oh, shit. Five is so there many. Is four or five. Eric. No, Eric's the oldest, I think. Eric is one of your twins, I'm calling it. The Anyways, I also <laughs> want to say something. Uh, 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 Lisa Arsenal, yes, great comment. Reminds us of the Bob Newhart show where he just keeps repeating to his patients, just stop it. That's a great comment. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to actually talk a lot about that today. So, Lisa, thank you so much for the uh, ammunition on that one. That's, uh, that's part of the bullshit we're going to talk about a little bit today. I love it. Yes. You all are Tiffany the Tiffany Maxim is reminding us that uh, the, kid, the, the drafts have five kids. I think it's 16, but whatever. I, I, love that, I love that Tiffany can remember that. And after yes. six years, for some reason, I still can't remember that. Absolutely. Reminder, we get started in one minute. Uh, one minute left in this pre-show. Nicole... I don't, I'm not going to pronounce your name right, but Nicole Price. Stephanie Price. Yeah. Welcome to the show. I don't think that I've seen your name before on the show. Yes. So, so welcome. And Agreed. I hope you, uh, Nicole, how did you find us? I'd love to know. Jeff Patton's here. Amy Sue Huss is here. I love that Jeff Patton's back. Just is the oldest, then Eric, then Joseph Bryan. How do I not remember your son's name is Bryan? Out of curiosity, how the fuck do I, like, how does that one escape me? I, if I'm not mistaken. Because it's my name, in case you're... 
not certain why that'd be so confusing to me. If I'm not mistaken, Brian is actually a lot like you. At least, is that right? That your Brian is a lot like this Brian? I feel like you've told me that before. Whatever. No one's like me. <laughs> no one's. Well, you're one of a kind. Aren't we all? Aaron Johnson, I have a hard time to just, uh, just saying stop it. I need methods and actions. Aaron, we all do. That's part of the point. That's part of the bullshit we're calling today. I'm just saying. A you child? make, Dana, you make us smile. I have no idea what Jeff is talking He's about. He's also putting 59. 59 Jeff, kids. Get oh, I get Jeff it. Patton's on an island by himself, and oh, I love him for it. Nicole's not sure how she found us, but she loves us. Oh, we I love, love you, you right back. Absolutely. <laughs> You're special. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks, thanks, Lorraine. It's great to be like you, Brian. I agree. The more, the more people like me in the world, the better. We'd, we'd all have a funner time. We, I Trust me. I'm and with to, that... I'm trying to think of something epically funny that you did yesterday, but at this... I do funny <gasps> things every day. Who wants to hear a funny Brian? Quick, I gotta start okay, the show. Okay, so Brian, he has slippers, right? I They're do. not on his feet right now, but he walks right around now. He walks around the house randomly, like, he, like, gears up and he, like, whips them off his foot and he's like... Whoosh. Yeah, but I like, hit people. <laughs> All the time. But like, I've gotten good at it. Like I can hit Maya in the head from like 20 feet away. So she'll be like sitting on the couch on her phone or something like that. And I'll be like 20 feet behind her. And I'll be like, whoosh. And like it'll fly and hit her right in the head. And it's a soft slipper. All you bleeding heart liberals, relax. I would not hurt my daughter intentionally. But yeah, I'm good at that. Now. It's hysterical. Yes. That was the funny Brian story for today. Yes. Anyways. Let's talk about Welcome to... Brian and Carrie, in the morning. We are live five mornings a week, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9.50 is the pre-show. And as you can probably tell, that's when all the fun happens. We're live from the beautiful Mountain Trombois, Quebec. And today's show is all about self-love, how it is the most important factor to success in anything. And yet, all you ever hear about is self-help gurus and success experts talking about self-love, but not really helping you understand how to find or achieve that yourself until today. We're going to show you exactly how it's done, why it's done this way, and what's missing. We're also going to call some bullshit. Do you believe that we're going to earn a share? If you believe we're going to earn your share, we would love you to share this in your new feeds right now for us. Let's aim for 60 shares today. I we like had like it. 47 yesterday. So can, let's go for 60 shares today. Let's get that share wagon going. Can we, we, we need like a share jingle. Share, share, share. I, I got the share jingle. Where my crew at? Crew, crew, yes. crew, crew, crew. Mm. What do you want to talk about today? I want to talk about self-love. Yes. Because I think self-love is the most important thing of all. It, it, <laughs> no, but it is. I, I know, but I was being playful the way I said that. You know, I actually... But want, it is the most important thing I, I want to tell um, a, a story. I mean, of course, I believe that's um, to be true. Uh, you know, way back when, obviously Maya's 11 now, but, you know, when she was very, very little, we started yeah. teaching both of the kids about self-love and, and, you know, concepts that were practical to, to children. But, you know, if you were to ask Maya when she was six years old or Maya now, mm -hmm. what's the most important thing to remember or to do in your life? And her, her answer will be to love yourself first. That's right. You know, it extrapolates because, you know, so, you know, back when she was four or five, we would teach her and talk to her and Sometimes she would come up with the most amazing things that were not regurgitated, meaning we didn't feed her this line. She just kind of came yeah. up with it. But, you know, I'd say something like, uh, Maya, who do you love the most? And she'd say, me. And I'd say, good girl. Now, why do you love yourself the most? And at five years old, she would just intuitively say, she'd think, and then she'd say, because if I can't love myself well, I'm not good enough to love anybody else properly. Yeah. That's fucking That's brilliant, awesome. right? And it is the point. If we're trying to lose weight, build a business, make money, be the best parents possible, be the best husband possible, the best wife possible, we're trying to attract soulmates and people we want to love and give all of our love to. We do that by amplifying ourselves. We do that by being the tallest and best versions that we can be of ourselves, right? So let me start by calling bullshit on three things that I can't stand. And they're very simple. You ready? Just do it. Just stop it mm. and find alignment. Those three things drive me fucking crazy, okay? And here's why. I was, as you know, 
clinically depressed for 12 years. You know how many times a self-help expert told me to just stop it? Mm. I don't know, probably a 1,000, 1,200. Brian, it's just a perspective. You don't have to feel this sad. You don't have to lie in bed all day long and worry about so many things. And you don't have to fear things like that. Just stop it. Yeah, okay, jackass, I'm on that. Honestly. Because if you could, you if I could stop, right? do you think I wanted to be sad? Do you think anybody wants to be upset? Do you think people want to have fear? Right. No, they don't want to have fear. They've never been taught how to not have those things, right? But here, here's a really crystallized point I want to make. Okay, let's take away the connotation of good or bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's stop calling fear, worry, anxiety bad. Let's just not call it that. Okay. So let's also not call happiness, grateful, or fulfilled good. Let's not call any of those things a definition. If we strip away the definition, what are all of those things? They're energy. That's all they are. Happiness, fulfillment, gratitude, fear, anxiety, worry. These are all just ports of energy, mm -hmm. right? So it's not about stopping the bad. It's about learning the tools necessary to channel that energy into the right lane. Mm -hmm. That's all. There's nothing to it. When you learn the tools, you apply them simply, you apply them consistently, the energy shifts into the correct lane. Right. And that does not fucking happen when a jackass says to you, just stop it. Yeah. It doesn't happen. You need the tools, you need the support, you need the community, you need the understanding and the love. You need to know that you're not alone and that you can't be a victim. We're not going to allow you to just sit and cry yourself to sleep. We're going to tell you, look, it, you've got to do this work. You've got to make this happen on your own, but you're in the Brian and Carrie crew. You're part of the community. There's unconditional love, support, and understanding here. So use that, use these tools, and guide that energy into the right lane. That's how it happens. Yeah. You Period. Know, um, just yesterday, I was having a conversation with someone, and, and what you, everything that you just said about the like just do it mentality, yes. it, it, it bleeds into this kind of line of thinking, right? Um, or this language, I should say, because somebody said to me, um, I'm going to, you know what, I got this, like, I'm going to fight through this, right? And, and I can't stand that language. But not because I, you know, I mean, I can't stand that language yes. because it shouldn't be a fight, right? And it's not a fight. And when we, when we, when we, de when we decide in our heads that we're fighting for something, we're automatically perceiving it as a challenge, as a struggle. It's yeah. going to be hard. It's going to take forever. And also, if you're walking into something thinking it's a fight, what is the possibility in front of you that you might lose the fight, yeah. right? Why even give us ourselves that, that outlook on it all, right? So I, I love the, yeah. the notion of energy versus the just do it and just stop it. Absolutely. We're taking the fight out of it all. If you fight energy, energy wins every right. single time because wherever you direct focus, wherever you direct uh, intensity, wherever you direct a fight, you're causing that thing to expand. You're making it grow. You're making it consume you. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out an amazing comment by uh, Rosanna, who is new to our show. I've had a lot of surgeries, and I truly believe that for some of them, it was lack of self-love. I am pressing the heart button mm -hmm. 75 times for that, Rosanna, because that's beautiful and it's true. One of the things Carrie and I teach at our retreats to our, to our private coaching clients is the degree to which our emotional and mental selves connect to our physical and they manifest illness and injury and challenge it's so true stress fear anxiety worry misuse of imagination imbalanced mindsets these not only contribute to illness and disease they are the causative factors mm. in some cases so beautiful comment and so true okay so let me keep railing for a second. Are you second. about to go to alignment for go a second? Go ahead. Because I want to add, I was just going to say that, you know, so you tell people not to fight and that's when people start to say to flow. Yes. Which leads right. to the alignment stuff because that's not any better, right? You, how do you flow? Okay. And I also want to say, Nicole, you're, you're brand new to our show. So like, I want to say this so well. Okay. You ready? Letting go of negative is a must also. How? Mm. How? Is it? 
let go of the negative the same as just stop it? Of course, right? Isn't it the same as just do it? How? How do you let go of negative? That is the point. Mm -hmm. That is the exact crucible that we're talking about today. There is too much fortune cookie banter yeah. in our society. Just do it. Just stop it. Find alignment. Just let it go. What does any of that mean on practical levels? Mm -hmm. Okay. Brain synapses are living, breathing things inside of the gray matter of our head. Unconscious stories and bias filters, which we've taught a lot about the last mm -hmm. three weeks. These are living, breathing mechanisms inside of our unconscious, inside of our imagination. We cannot just decide to stop, to let go, to change, to do it. Because we have woven a path this direction for months or years. And the simple decision of changing that doesn't undo all of these living, breathing fabrics, which, which I mean, they simply do what they know. Right. That's all, right? So it's about reconditioning. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the point. So I love what you said there. The whole like, okay, so if you can't just let it go, then find flow. Right. Right? Which is another like quasi term for alignment. Right. Okay. I, I've heard this on Facebook recently from a coach. All, all my clients who aren't succeeding in business, what I tell them is that they're just not in internal alignment. And all you need to do is find internal alignment. And once you have eternal alignment, money just flows to you. Like the universe is just gifting you for being in internal alignment. So find internal alignment. The fuck does that mean? Mm. Honest to God, what the fuck does that mean? Right. I mean, I, I know what it means. How do you do it? Exactly. How do you do it? How do you find internal? Do you meditate? Mm -hmm. Do you do yoga? Because that's more often than not what people think. And, and guys, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. It is dangerous to spew that kind of rhetoric mm -hmm. and tell people that all they have to do is meditate or all they have to do is yoga or something like that. And all of a sudden internal alignment just happens. I want to restate something. All of your influences, all of your experiences have contributed to brain synapses and an unconscious story that is woven into the fabric of who you are. Is that changeable? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it changeable simply? Yes. Yeah. Does it require simplicity and consistency of a couple of tools? Yes. Mm -hmm. But do you change it by just snapping your fingers, making a decision, and doing some breathing exercises? Fuck no. Right. And that's the problem. Yeah, you know, and I want to add, because I actually think that this is, is a really powerful point to share with you. We're not saying that you don't actually have to do work, right? Yeah. I mean, we're the first ones to say, do your journaling consistently every day, right? So we're not saying that you have to do nothing. And we're also, we also not saying that alignment isn't a good thing, Alignment's right? Alignment's necessary. It's necessary. The, the biggest problem is, is that everybody talks about the just do it or that you need to be in alignment. And then you have these two gap, these two points with a big gap in between that's the like, yeah, that's really great. But right. could someone please tell me what exactly that means and how in the heck do I find it? Absolutely. Can right. I read a comment from Stacy? This is beautiful. Been going through some shit and as positive as I tend to be, hard not to teeter just a tad. That negative mm -hmm. shit from 20 years ago was patterned. I know different and better now, but it doesn't mean it's easy. I am so far from enlightened. Beautiful comments. It's relatable. I think we can all relate to that. And I love that you were so vulnerable, Stacey, in saying it, Brian and Carrie, in the morning. Thank you so much for that. Because that, that empowers people to, to let their stories be as well. Yeah. If you have a story about your own life, just like state, please acknowledge it now. We'd love to read it. We'd love to see it. We'd love to be the vehicle and the venue from which you can deliver it safely. Yeah. And I have more to say, but it looks like you want to say I something. Just wanna, I just want to shout out to Billy here because he said, I gained more from Brian and Carrie live over the last few weeks than I've received from reading over a thousand books and attending a thousand, uh, oh, hundreds of seminars. Dude, you know, I, thank I, you. I think that like, thank you so much for that, Billy, number one. But that's music to our ears because, yes. you know, we are hoping to fill all those gaps. 100%, absolutely. And uh, Angela, great comment. It's knowing how to bridge the gap. Exactly. Exactly. Find alignment, just stop it, just do it. It is not the tools to bridge a gap. It is the rhetoric that is complete nonsense. 
complete nonsense. So let's start. I'm going to tell you something. Chris Goldowski, not surprisingly, a few comments ago, lobbed off the very first vehicle. Did he? Yes. You ready? Count your wins. Count your wins. And if you get tired of us saying these things at nauseum, I actually want to apologize up front. But these exercises are your tools. Mm -hmm. They will change everything. Okay, so let's paint a picture of what count your wins means. First, it must be understood that the human brain is wired to be negative. We retain, remember, and react to negativity with way more intensity than we do positivity. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we can go through an entire 24-hour cycle and have some pretty good shit happen, mm -hmm. but we don't even take notice of it. Yeah. We just, you know, oh, we got lucky. Yeah. Oh, thank God that worked out. We don't count it as a win, a triumph, a positive factor in our life. Mm -hmm. But one bad thing goes wrong, oh fuck. Yeah. We're thinking about it, talking about it, and dreaming about it for the next three weeks. Right. That's not your fault, that's not anybody's fault. That's the way the human brain has been wired evolutionarily, okay? So counting wins every single day does one thing first. It starts to change your perspective. Counting your wins at the end of the day allows you the next day and the next day to start seeing the wins more often when they're actually happening right. in real time. Now I want you to just use your imagination, extrapolate upon that. If your life goes from being pretty emotionally tuned out most of the time, which is where most of us sit, but when the bad stuff happens, you react to it aggressively, that's where we mostly sit. But you start to count your wins every day and all of a sudden your life changes so you're in a pretty good mood most of the time. Yeah. And even the smallest thing that just goes your way, you start to enumerate it in real time as a win. Yeah. Can you not see how your entire perspective on life starts to evolve in the right way? Yeah. Right? Right. Robin Canley made a great comment that chime, that is in line with that. She said, I had a win. I only cried about something for like two minutes until realizing it's going to be okay and looked at the positives. Normally, yeah. it would ruin my whole day. And we talked about this last week, right? Like those wins. Like you, you find yourself being able to count them in the moment, but you find yourself finding the, the little uh, increments of change yes. that lead to the big perspective change. 100%. I love, by the way, Angie, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, Sackowitz loves counting wins. Michelle Lees uh, loves counting wins. Maureen feels so humble by listing why I'm so awesome. Yes. Right. I hear beautiful humility. And you know, the Elaine Glass is here. I <laughs> love <laughs> Elaine. The one yes. thing about wins that I find um, so powerful, and, and I had this experience this morning in our, in our time when we were the, uh, doing it this morning, is that counting wins is like, yes, you have to sit down and think about it, yeah. but everybody can find wins. So yes. this morning, I was more tired than usual. My brain hadn't quite clicked on yet. I actually went to counting my wins first because it was an easy place for my brain to go. There's there's a pattern of it being almost like just an activity that you're doing. Absolutely. And you're, it's much easier to list out. It's in real time. That's right. It's in real time. Um, I just want to add here um, a couple things. Changing focus, says Jeff Patton. Roseanne has tears in her eyes, but she thinks they're happy ones. Bless you, love. So happy to hear that. Stacy, you're absolutely right. It is about humanity. Mm. The reason we are negative by design in our brain is because we're evolutionary animals. So it wasn't that many hundreds of years ago that we were hunters and gatherers. Right. Which means the bear coming to kick your ass just around the corner was a real threat. Right. And as much as we maybe not realize this because we evolved so quickly in certain aspects of humanity, our DNA is, is very slow to catch up. Right. Our brains are still wired to a very strong fight or flight mechanism. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah, it's massively important. Um, I'm just going to add a couple more comments here. Do you mind looking at Erin Johnson? Because I'm sure she wrote something awesome. So that's the first thing about counting wins. Here's the second thing, okay? And it correlates to the second tool that we want you to consider with regards to self-love today, which is learn your language. But when you count your wins on a regular basis, not only do you affect the literal biology of your synapses in your brain, you start to change your perspective, you start to count wins in real time, you start to recondition the story, the language in your unconscious, and that's where the power is. Yeah. 
That's where the power is. So I know this hurts. I know it doesn't feel good. I know that you're not going to enjoy me saying this. But if you were just to stop and listen without interruption, without editing or censoring for five minutes, what you are actually saying to yourself, you know what you would hear? You're stupid. Mm. You're fat. You're not, you don't have self-love because you're not worthy of love. Because you're not lovable. Who would ever love someone like me? I'm a failure. I've always failed. I'll never succeed. I'll never make money. I'll never be rich. Why would I be rich? No one would ever pay me. I'm not worth paying. And I know that hurts, but guys, that is your language. And I want to, like, hashtag this. You cannot out goal set an unsuccessful mm -hmm. mindset. And you've tried. You've made New Year's resolutions. You've set goals, and they don't work. And this is why. Your mindset is in a place of negativity and anger and hostility and belittling and mean. You can't out goal set that. So counting your wins does the other job of starting to reprogram your unconscious language. And that's the big power. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have got to call attention to what Michelle Adams just mm. wrote because it is so powerful. She said, I had become numb. And I only felt the negative stuff, but counting wins helped me learn how to feel good again. Yeah. And like, I just want to say, Michelle, I remember that, that, you know, remember that with you, how like there, there, there was a literal turn off of all good emotion. Yes. And there's people watching this right now who can relate to that, that you do not remember what it feels like to feel good again. Ain't right. That, the truth. that is without question what counting wins does. It restores the feeling of good Michelle, as you're shifting the perspective. That's beautiful. And so true. Yeah. Uh, guys, I just want to add, you might be more numb emotionally than you even realize. And counting wins starts to open the right floodgate. It starts to take the energy and put it in the right lane. Mm -hmm. A couple of things I want to add. Karen Roberts, there have been days that the only win I've had was being blessed by being here with the crew. First of all, I want to say that means more to us than you could possibly imagine. Second, we're not going anywhere. And neither is the crew. This is why we do what we do. I think I'm tired. Well, I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. I'm tired of watching coaching and counseling be about belittling people and mm. shaming people and yelling at people and calling them pansies if they don't, just don't do it and shaming them if they can't find internal alignment. We'll always be the support mechanism that people want to need. Um, do you know how change happens at the human level when we feel love, understood, supported, and heard? That's how change happens. So you can bank Karen and everybody else that this community is always going to be about love, support, unconditional mechanisms of healing. Always. I want to add one more thing. You have more wins, love. You do. So let's stretch our comfort zone and find them because they're there. And when we start to enumerate them, we're going to start shifting that energy. I'm going to add, Karen, yes. a win to what you just wrote. I don't know if you've, you put this win into that category, but a, a win is that, yeah, you had your crew here, but you got on your computer or got onto your phone to be a part of it. And that was a decision that you made in those difficult moments that you've been having. So yes. that's a win, right? Absolutely. There are so many great comments right now. Can I just add Vince Maltz is here? What's up, Vinny? Thank <laughs> you for hashtagging. You can't out goal set an unsuccessful mindset. Um, Jeff Patton agrees, numb is not a good place. Jeff, you've been there. I remember that as well. Yes. Yeah. I want to read Dana's, Dana Powell's quote here. Yesterday, after I invested in the program, uh, I had a myriad of thoughts about why would I think this time would be different. And I had the aha, my language. Yes, this is exactly why you need this program. Dana, you've taken a moment to thank us, but thank you. Well, I got goosebumps. So do I. You get it, Dana. You get it. It's not as complex as we think it is. But it is a certain a self journey. Mm. And, and 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 we have to start itemizing and understanding how we're talking to ourselves. Yeah. That is as breathtaking a first moment right. with our program as I've ever heard in my entire life. I completely life. agree. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. 
I can't even keep up with all these comments. Right? Just Angie amazing. Olsen, why are you uh, girding at us right now? And why is everybody <laughs> crying? Dana and uh, Papa Drops are crying. You know, I'm going to take a shout in the dark of why everybody's crying. And, and if anybody resonates with what I am saying, chime in. I think that the lack of, the, the, the feeling of belonging and the lack of feeling of isolation. Yes. Being amongst a community of people who understand. Sure. Who are not afraid to show themselves. Who are not afraid of judgment. Yes. Who are, you know, we welcome you holy and you welcome us holy. That is something that is just, that is worth bringing tears. That's why I, I have I goosebumps. Get, is that right? Did you nail it, guys? I just want to see a few more comments. Connie, I withdrew from my outside world when my son died. Coming here daily and interacting is a win for me. I left the house to take photos just because uh, here empowered me. Connie, you have no idea how much that means to us. Uh, when my doctor told me to just stop it, he never accounted for how bad a state my mind was and how dangerous those words were. Yeah. Lisa Arsenault, thank you for that comment. Words are dangerous. And that is my problem with the shaming, belittling, yelling coaches. Just do it. Just stop yeah. it. Just find internal alignment. We are at a, at, a, at a chasm of danger in our society when that's what we're telling people. Yeah. You know, Good. And, and that Good comes points. back around to the point that we made last week. We were talking about this. We had a conversation with someone a couple weeks ago who said to us, you know, we were talking about what we do. It was a new person in our world. So we were just kind of, you know, having this conversation about who we are and what we do. And this person said to us, he's like, you know what? He goes, I, I know a lot of people who are in the mindset space. Yeah. But he goes, it's really refreshing to sit here and talk to two people who aren't just saying they're in the mindset space, but have the backing yes. of actual experience, both personal and professional, right. to, to, to be in that space, right? And the danger comment is also, so important because yes. I think that that's the part that gets me so angry on the inside when I see the shaming is that, you know what? It is dangerous. Yes. And we have to recognize the power of our words. 100% If true. you're a coach and you're saying these things, you have to take responsibility for them. So well said. Dana Powell says, yes, yes, yes. Being seen, Sabobona. Exactly, my love. Uh, Brian Sackwood says, I feel safe here. Angie uh, qualified about her girl comment being my points regarding coaches who belittle others. Um, these are great. Billy Reuter, uh, Brian and Carrie just feels like a safe place to share, express, and feel loved. So appreciate that. Good morning, Marcy. Woo! Hey, Flava. What's up, Flava? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I'm going to read you a quick email. You ready? This email was sent seven years and four months ago by me to Smalls, a.k.a. Carrie Campbell. You ready? I feel like an ass. <laughs> I actually typed that. Uh, this is as sad and silly as it gets, so a little background is necessary. You've agreed to everything, and by everything, I emailed Carrie once before this email and said, look, it, I want to tell you something private. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you've agreed to everything, so no need to rehash any of these points. Here's the thing. I learned some time ago to say what I feel in virtually every situation. I listen in life more than I talk. Take everything in, render an opinion when asked for it. But I do pay attention to everything. That being said, and back to my original point, I always say what I feel when I move to say it. And you've moved me. I don't know how or why, but I tend not to dwell on those questions because they aren't mine to answer. So I'm telling you this to make you smile. Not because I think this will make you smile from a standpoint that I am some kind of wonderful man, but because I think hearing this from anyone would make anyone smile. You have long enchanted me. The first and only time I met you, I was taken. You are absolutely gorgeous, but your spirit, personality, smile, elegance, and candor are entirely spellbinding. I have had a very silent crush on you for these past three years. That word is so teenage cliche but it's the only one I can use that will draw any degree of connection to how I felt. You are intelligent, passionate, gorgeous, did I already say that one, insightful, spiritual, and incredibly gentle. I have no wishes, no agenda, and no motives. I sit atop as the CEO of my company, the one that you're a member of, 
and feeling foolish about how I feel, thus the need for you to remain quiet on this issue. But I have no intentions of going to my grave with thoughts, songs, or poems in my heart. And thus, you have been told. I hope you don't think of me as some kind of perverted sicko. I mean this to be nothing more than a reflection of the kind of person I feel you are and how your presence is quite simply radiant and alluring. BG. I was the very first email I ever sent to Carrie. <laughs> Seven years and four months ago, I sent that email to a woman who I had met three years previous, but it had no correspondence with in those three years. It, you know, we get charged a lot by people saying, you guys, your love story is the most beautiful I've ever seen. We have been told by no fewer than 25 people that a movie should be made about our love story. And if you don't know our entire story, one day I'll tell it to you. So we get, we get kind of <laughs> talked about a lot in that respect, about our story, our love, our fairy tale romance. I wanted to read that email to you, and I wanted to read it to you today for this reason, okay? You all know, because I've been vulnerable, I was clinically depressed for 12 years, I was suicidal, I was overweight, I was near bankrupt, I was always broke, I was very angry, I was very violent. It was all a mask. It was all self-loathing mechanisms, uh, because I had no self-love, I had no self-worth. People who are violent, people who talk tough, people who tell you that you just need to find alignment, you just need to do it, you need to stop it. They have self-worth issues, they have self-love problems, and they're using that as a reflection to you. So although we appreciate the kind considerations about our relationship and our fairy tale romance and how... You know, I've become a stepdad, and my two kids are my best friends in the world, and I, didn't, I wouldn't know what to do without carrying these kids. That email was sent, not from a broken man, not from a man who was hoping to get laid, but from a man who had done the work of counting wins and learning language for a good two years. And in that two-year process, found love for himself found worth for himself, and so had no problem sharing, expressing that love to somebody he didn't even know that well. It was the greatest idea I ever had <laughs> to send her an email like that because we were engaged and I moved up to Montreal four months after I sent that email. I don't care if you're an entrepreneur building a business. I don't care if you're a little overweight or unhealthy right now and you want to get to the gym and lose weight. I don't care if you're looking for an ideal spouse. I don't care if you're in a relationship and you want to make that relationship more ideal. I don't care what your goal is. Self-love, self-worth is what's going to make it happen. Because if you don't value yourself, nobody else is ever going to value you the way you deserve to be valued. The best decision I ever made was sending that email to Carrie Campbell. But I'm going to tell you something I've never even told you before. The second best decision I ever made was not sending the email I was going to send to Carrie Campbell a year before I sent that one. Because I wasn't ready. Yeah. I wasn't bathing in self-worth. And had I sent an email a year before this one... Brian and Carrie in the morning wouldn't exist. Brian and Carrie wouldn't exist. I wouldn't be a stepdad. We wouldn't live here because I would have somehow self-sabotaged that relationship. I waited until my self-worth, my self-love was in place. And that is why everything is so successful in our lives. Our daughter is a mirror of us. Why does Maya walk around saying she loves herself most? Because she knows that's true for us. She hears us telling you. She hears us talking about it. Who do I love more than anybody else on the planet? Me. Because if I'm not the best version of myself, I'm not good enough for my wife. I'm not as good as I should be for my kids. And vice versa. Self-love is the answer. Count your wins, learn your language. It is the key. 
<laughs> so I want to add. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do it without crying. You're gonna do great. Um, so clearly, I am a feeler, as you guys can all tell. Yes. Um. So first of all, that was read from about 175 pages of all the initial yes. emails that we have. But, you know, first of all, it doesn't matter how many times I read it, I still feel and remember exactly what I felt. Yeah. Um, so what you guys, because you can obviously see me bawling in tears right now, I want to tell you what I'm going through in my head. The first thing is the initial feeling of like, I. it still feels the same as the day I received it. Yeah. But number two... Um, the recognition that, you know, I wasn't prepared to receive that email a year ago either. And we've had a lot of conversations about this. Like I had just like stepped back into a place where I was even prepared to allow love back into my world. So we were really ready for each other. Yeah. And, and this wouldn't have happened if that wasn't the case. But then like the part that I think has me tearing up the most is like, I'm thinking about the last seven years. And really and truly, like, you guys see what our relationship is now and our life is now. But we have gone through fire. We have walked. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it. We've gone through fire. We've walked through the challenges. We have had the pain, the feel, like, all of that stuff that you might be feeling in your life right now. And the only decision we made was that we chose to keep walking. That's right. So whatever you're feeling right now, just... Just keep walking. Just keep, do these things because I'm telling you, like, it changes your world. Yes, completely. it does. I, it feels like so inappropriately timed for me to say, guys, because Carrie's going to put the link in to our How to Finally Achieve the Goals You Set program. She's going to put it in the comment box right now. I feel like it's inappropriate timing for us or me to say, guys, that's one of the reasons we want to give you this program. We want you to get this program because it's not just about achieving goals. But you've got to call it something. Thus, let's eliminate your limits, how to finally achieve the goals you set. But look at us. We're a walking testament to why counting wins and learning a language, which is just two of the many exercises we give you. Why they're so critical. They bathe you in self-love. They help you find self-worth. They they release they, they help you peel back the layers that have attached themselves to you over the years. And when you peel back the layers, you get to you. And you know what? You are self-love. You are self-worth. You don't have to find alignment. You are aligned. You have to get the layers out of the way that are fucking up the energy flow. You, you, You don't have to just do it or just stop it. You have to peel back the layers little bit by little bit so that that alignment just is there. You at the core, all of us at the core, are vibrant, energetic nuggets of fucking perfection. Perfection. And it's just been this experience and this influence combined with this person and that thing that have layered on us and distorted the energy. Count your wins, learn your language, peel these layers back. Bit by bit, it takes less time than you think. It just takes simplicity and consistency. So we're going to put that link in now. And yes, we're going to encourage you for the rest of our lives to get your hands on this fucking program. But not because we're gifted marketers. Because we fucking care. Because we don't want Karen Roberts and Angie Olsen who's crying right now. Or Lisa who's dealing with doctors who don't get it. We don't want you guys to feel this anymore. And we want to be the community that you know you feel safe to unlayer this shit in. There it is. I see you posted the link. I did it while you said post Thank you. Best shower show in the league. Vince is in the shower. I got to get a stronger speaker. (laughs) You're awesome. You're not the only one who watches us in the shower. Sawabona, Bobby. (laughs) Much love to you on your birthday, beautiful. Bobby's laughing. uh, Bobby's crying because every time I cry, Bobby cries. And she cries, I cry. I love that Lisa just hashtag nuggets of fucking perfection. Because we are. We absolutely are. You know what? Let's, can we just please for one second take religion out of everything for one second? Do you know what we are? Do you know what we are? Do you know what at the molecular level, biologically, do you know what we're comprised of? 
Do you know where our insides and our outsides are built from? Stardust. Fuck. How romantic is that? Stars in the heavens explode over these years and billions of eons and, and their explosion rains stardust down onto our planet. And every life form on this planet, including you, is born of this cosmic stardust. How does that not just make you go, wow, I really don't give a shit that I got a flat tire today. Mm. I'm fucking stardust, bitches. Star I'm stardust, bitches. We need to hashtag we that. We need to get that on a t-shirt. I'm stardust, oh bitches. Oh my gosh, we're totally getting that on a t-shirt. I have, um, I Lisa Arsenault, you almost made me lose it again right there, but... Um, she says, Brian and Carrie, since you, I'm off antidepressants. Mwah. And like, that is just. Yes. My home girl. To my ears. If Woo. It, <laughs> everybody is like all watery eyes and look at Bill, that. Billy's, we all just cry together. Billy, Billy's watery eyes won't let him see the keyboard as he's writing his book. I have so much love for you guys to look at. Yes, Lisa. <laughs> Stardust bitches. I love that Elaine hashtag Elaine Stardust Ross, bitches. Stardust bitches. Yes. Here's what I'm going to say in closing. Are you ready? We talked yesterday after Brian and Carrie in the morning when I dropped the idea. Hey, how about we do this? <laughs> Carrie ended up loving it. So we're going to do it. I'm going to say May probably, right? Yep. You know what we're going to do? <laughs> Three, maybe four times a year. We're going to have what we're calling international crew days. Mm-hmm. And we've already done some logistics. So st probably this May is going to be our very first International Crew Day experience. What does that mean? Come to our house. Sit right over there. We're going to map it all out nice and comfy for you. We could probably fit 25, 30 people in here comfortably. You sit behind us while we film a Brian and Carrie in the morning. And then the rest of the day. We'll spend the day together. We'll spend the day together. We'll hang out. We'll talk. We'll have some food. We'll bake. We'll cook. We'll have some vino. We'll go get a workout if you want to. Just come to our home. Hang out for Brian and Carrie in the morning and then spend some time with Brian and Carrie. And you know what? I'm making sure the kids don't go to school that day because they're going to hang out oh, with you all as well. Oh, hell no. Absolutely. Because you've got to hang with Chase and Maya if you come all this way. Caitlin Graham told, just said, I told my hubby I'm going. Yes. Bring him with you. Bring him with. Yes, crew days are coming. Details are coming. But if you'd like to be part of this very first international crew yeah. day, which is probably sometime in May, just tell us right now. Say I'm in. I am in. And we'll get you some details. Ooh, you guys are the best. So much love for this crew. So much love for all of you. Robin's dragging her pregnant ass over there. Yes. By May, it's actually, it'll be warm. We could sit on the balcony. We got a big acre of land. We got lots of room for everybody. You know, Billy yesterday said that every show gets better. I don't know, Billy. I'm curious to know. Was today better than yesterday? Right on. I like that too. Dan, Maureen, Jeff Patton, uh, Lynette. They're all coming. It's great. You can Tiff sit on my lap, Tiffany. Tiffany. Right on. <laughs> Lisa's coming. She's bringing Tiffany. Mona, you're welcome here, of course. All right, guys. We'll cut you loose for today. Please don't forget. Give us a share. We're back tomorrow, five days a week. Tomorrow's Thursday. We're back with another awesome installment of Brian and Carrie in the morning. Until then, mad love for y'all. See you tomorrow. We're stardust, bitches.